The data has made something crystal clear. Physical health is mental health and vice versa. Mental health is physical health. Look, one thing that Western medicine does really well is it dives deep into singular topics. Unfortunately, this divides things up and has led to the myth that mental and physical health aren't intricately connected. The bottom line is if you improve one, you tend to improve the other, or to put it differently, you can't improve one without improving the other. Uh, bringing this up because when you look at the data on the effect, the data now is really clear on this, the positive mental effects of exercise and nutrition on mental health, which, you know, we yeah, used to think, okay, substantial. yeah, yeah. We thought, oh, you know, you work out, it improves your physical body, right? Change your diet, improves your physical body. Um, and somehow there's a belief, I don't know if it's explicit, but I think a lot of people just assume that they're not necessarily totally connected, but we forget that the brain is part of the body and that a healthy brain, uh, is connected to a healthy mind. Well, the data on exercise and nutrition shows it not only to be profoundly impactful in both directions, right? Both in the positive and potentially in the negative. It's so profoundly impactful there's no medication, there's no talk therapy, there's nothing that even comes close to the impact that um, that those things can have on your on your mental health. And then, you know, vice versa. Um, improving your mental health tends to improve your eating habits and it tends to lead to better activity levels, uh, exercise, and just movement in general. Now, we knew this as trainers. We knew mm. when we worked with people's diets that we were w way more successful when we dealt with the behaviors rather than just the follow this, follow that type of deal. When people could figure out the why behind why they ate a particular way or why they distracted themselves with food um, and they tackled that genuinely, then we would see these like, incredible improvements in consistency. So, I mean, they're, they're, it's, they're one and the same, right? They're you, one and the same. Do you think this is a result of the Western kind of approach and philosophy of like segmenting the body totally. up into all these different systems and we're just going to isolate this and and address this specifically so you know in, in terms of instead of looking at it as a whole like all systems affect each other how is this going to now have um you know the the byproduct of that is going to affect this well to become a mental health expert you don't learn anything about diet or exercise right to become a physical health expert you learn almost nothing about mental health um, the funny thing is coaches and trainers that, that work with people for a long time will tell you that it's, I mean, you have to, you have to do it all right now. I'm not saying I don't think it's possible. Well, maybe it is, but I think it's not feasible to have someone like master all these things, but it is something to keep in mind because then you can work with other practitioners to get your clients the best results or just for yourself. Like realize like if something's good for my mind, it's probably good for my body. And if something's good for my body, it's probably good for my mind. Mm -hmm. They're not separate. They're not in vacuums. They're so closely connected. Uh, and again, the data is extremely clear on this. I think most people are, are pretty aware of this actually. I think what they're, what I think that we fail to realize is how powerful it is. I think, I don't think there's a person in the world that you would ask like, Hey, do you think exercise, you know, improves your, your mental state? I don't think anyone would be like, no, yeah. I didn't know that. I think everybody would agree. I think the thing that isn't communicated enough is just just how profound it is. Mm -hmm. The fact that it rivals medications, that it it's that successful when actually people apply that. And then it begs the question, if if that's true, and that's what all the research is pointing to, is why then do we not, as soon as someone comes in, say, for therapy, would it not be like, okay, I'll see you next Tuesday in between now and next Tuesday, I want you to go to the gym three times yeah. or I want you to like. They're starting to. Yeah. They're starting to. It just, uh, it takes so long for for uh, studies and stuff to, um, you know, well, kind of become implemented. Yeah, I too think that even with the way that we learn and how we've structured our education yes. system, it's yes. like, it, it's such a, an afterthought of the physicality that's necessary for kids to learn at a higher level. Um, and that's so interconnected. Um, and the more that some of these schools, like the very few schools that have picked up on this of including more physical activity and figuring out ways to incorporate it throughout the day have had way better test scores and results. Yeah. Look, if, uh, if somebody said, let's say you were, you were, you took the average person and you say, Hey, look, we took two groups of people over the age of 65 and we wanted to improve their cognitive scores. 
One group, we had them do brain game exercises, crossword puzzles and mm. math problems and, you know, uh, problems involving spatial awareness where they have to like study an object, right? Yeah, so group, we just had them do squats. And then, yeah, the other group, we had them lift weights <laughs> yeah. and change their diet. Which one do you think has better improvements in cognitive performance? Now, the data will tell you it's the exercise group and the diet group. Yeah, that'll that blow actually, people's minds though. That'll actually get better cognitive performance than the people doing the brain games. Yeah. I remember, now this is in now the that's reverse. A step, now that's the step that I don't think everybody's aware that's of. That's what I mean. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah. now the reverse is also interesting. You know, remember those studies you would read, you would read about where you had um, like groups of athletes, some practicing free throws, others mentally going through yeah, the free throws. Yeah, I shared throws. that study. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the mental, the guys who practiced the free throws in their head did almost as well. Almost exactly improvements. the same. So. And the people who did both. Did the best. Did the best. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. that was what was, and but the people who, practice like crazy uh, versus the people that just did it mentally were almost exactly the same. Yes. It's yes. crazy how, how that's wild to think that you this, put in all that work and the person yeah. who just visualized it got. This is even true for, for supplements, like supplements that um, in a healthy way, of course, because you can do things unhealthily, but supplements that improve um, strength, that improve metabolism, immune system, uh, will also show tend to show improvements in cognitive health and vice versa. Things that are good for the brain, like uh, choline, right? Choline, some 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 scientists would say it's an essential nutrient. Um, choline is very important for brain function. In people who lack it, when they supplement, with, you know what they notice in the gym? Improved performance. Mm -hmm. They notice that they're stronger and they have more stamina. Creatine, creatine is another great example. Yeah. Creatine is as much of a brain supplement as it is a, a muscle supplement. Well, it's weird to me too that people can't, figure out as well like if you're in a state of of pain or you're unhealthy or you're you know not feeling good like your thought process and your behaviors and the way that you your outlook on uh obstacles or anything that's like somewhat challenging like you have a completely different perspective than you do when you have a a healthy thriving brain yeah it's 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 or it's, body i should it's say it's also pr uh promoted or or say pushed i would say in media like how often do we watch movies where the athletes are portrayed as dumb mm -hmm. and the, you know, the nerds or whatever are portrayed as like Jocks. totally physically yeah. unhealthy and unfit. Yeah. Um, and that pushes the narrative that they're not totally connected. When the truth is, of course, there's context matters, right? People who are gifted in one area aren't necessarily gifted in the other and vice versa. But if you took athletes who are gifted athletes and you had them not exercise, their cognitive performance would go down. In other words, they're smarter because of the 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 physical activity that they do. And the same thing with the the brainiacs. You know, you see all the scientists or the research nerds and they're trying to improve their performance in the lab or what their tests or what their innovation. Mm -hmm. um, if they went out and did some exercise and improved their physical health, they would have improvements um, in those things. Be so interesting if they did like gates lifted, you know? Be so interesting if they did like a um where schools where kids for the first 20 to 30 minutes of the day started that way. I like if they, if we could show like it, it, it increased. You got to look at the studies on ADHD. They've done that where they'll take kids and they'll have them be active X amount of times for every two hours. And they'll change, they'll make, the, they'll make, they'll involve the body with the mind, with their activities. And uh, it's remarkable how much it improves performance among people with who would be, classified as ADHD. I, I think if you extend it across the board, you would see way better. I, I mean, look, here's the deal. You ever watch a, a teacher that's really effective with kids, especially little kids? What do they do? They get them to move. Yep. They get them to do different things. Just trying to get them to sit down and not do anything. I mean, that disrupts the energy systems of the body, which fuel the brain. Mm -hmm. They don't just fuel the, your, your muscles. They also fuel the brain. Hormones. I mean, if your hormones are off, for goodness sakes, you know, you look at the signs of uh, one of the hormone imbalances that's very studied is low testosterone in men. Do you know what they show with cognitive performance in low testosterone? It's it's down. They put men on testosterone who have chronically low testosterone, their cognitive abilities improve dramatically. And of course, their mental state, things like anxiety and depression um, tend to get better. And of course, exercise and diet positively affects hormones um, as well. So, And then supplements, this is where it gets real fun. We often look at supplements and there's categories of supplements, right? Like this is better for athletic performance. And then these are better for, let's say, cognitive performance. 
if you do, if you take genuinely effective cognitive performance enhancing supplements, you will get a physical performance boost in the gym. Caffeine is a wonderful example. Mm -hmm. Caffeine is a classic. Now, nobody would argue this, right? Every pre-workout has caffeine in it. But if I, but if caffeine were just discovered today, then and let's say people just discovered it and they found like, oh my God, this improves cognitive performance, especially when you're tired, you got better memory recall, I'm sharper. Um, then it would be sold as this like total nootropic. But we know caffeine does both. Caffeine, because it stimulates the central nervous system, <clears throat> improves athletic performance. But also it's a, it's a, it's a supplement that is <coughs> widely used by people who either want to improve their cognitive performance or just their physical performance. Yeah. Just to give you an example. Organifi has supplements like this, right? Like pure, they would call as a nootropic. Uh, because it helps with brain function and gut health, which is connected. Mm -hmm. Take it before your workout. See if you notice improvement. You probably will. You or will. take it regularly, and you'll notice athletic uh, performance improvements, right? Their pre-workout that they have, um, peak power, same thing. Uh, before you take a test or you study, it is something you want to do before athletic performance, but try it before you study or read. See if you remember more and you're, and you're sharper while you're reading or trying to absorb information. And you'll find that- Goes hand in hand. Absolutely. So it's, it's all the same and this separating them out has um, made us so much less effective. Is it just our culture that does that? It's all cultures that are based in Western medicine are now doing that. Because mm -hmm. if you look at ancient, um, or should I say old, you know, wellness practices, they all talk about how everything is all one, right? Yeah, so you, one yeah, massive so you, energy yeah, system. Yeah, so, you know, Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, they, they talk about things in this way. Um, but then, you know, what science is, which is very good, science is, is an incredible tool. We can get super deep on and segment the body. Like, you know, you get a, you get a gastroenterologist. Yeah, we have some of the best specialists. Exactly. Yeah, some right? of the best specialists in the world come from where we're, I, I mean, that part. Doug, you, when you were in Japan, because uh, you were in the school system there too, <clears throat> what, did yeah. you notice a difference in the way they teach the kids in, 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 along the lines of what Sal's talking about with movement and exercise and like, Definitely more movement, a lot more activity outside. Of course, I was working with young kids, but every year Japan has something called uh, Sports Day, and they prepare for this thing where they do all these events and they, you know, parade around and have a great time. Uh, so I think yes, uh, activity in Japan is far more, you know, prevalent than it is. They here. They also have. I don't know if all the companies do there, but I remember reading about how there was a uh, culturally before they work. There's they would, tradition they would, to do calisthenics would, before. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I've seen companies doing that. I mean, uh, I've like in front of a Mercedes dealership, for example, I saw a bunch of guys <laughs> in ties Perfect. and women yeah. in skirts, and they're all doing they're their definitely calisthenics, about optimizing, right? Yeah, for sales. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I could see that. I, I love that. That's great. I mean, I wonder. I, I, it's so it's like, although this is what uh, like more and more studies are supporting your argument, it does feel to me like we're going further and further the opposite direction, though. Like, even though more is proving your point it almost feels like we're getting further away from that than going like, hey, maybe there's some of these things that we can adopt or bring back. At least it feels that way to me. I don't yeah. feel like I'm I'm seeing more companies or more people get on on board with that. I well, mean, I think- uh, It was that long ago that we started to get rid of PE in some schools. I, I mean, know. That's, that's I crazy. Know. Well, education might need to make a U-turn because um, I don't know if you guys look at the numbers, the percentages of people pulling the kids out of school mm -hmm. and putting them in homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I shared those numbers the other day. Yeah, brother. that'll it's kill. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. That'll kill the, the education. I mean, don't you system. think that the education, I mean, we're getting ready to go to the ARC event, right, with um, uh, Jordan Peterson and his, I believe he, I don't know if they've launched his school yet or it's about to. I mean, that's going to be- In November or something, I think. That's going to be a major disruptor. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I, we've talked oh, on the podcast a long time ago about- that being one of the biggest uh, sectors that I think is going to get disrupted in this next decade. Don't you, do you still believe it's that? It's already getting disrupted. Dude, if you can curate like some of the best professors from every school, Ivy League schools and all these things, and then you just put them in one platform for like a lower cost and you get like a way better uh, presentation and, and delivery, it's like, I, I've always wondered like what stops somebody right now from like curating already what's out there on TED Talks? Yeah. I feel like you could put a curriculum together that is like really good. I think that's what this is going to be like, if, right? If, like if education, and I, I understand the value <laughs> of um, state-sponsored education. So I understand that there's value there. But you do? If, what is it? Explain it to me. Well, 
Well, okay, no, I understand. <laughs> just, just, no, I seriously, I do understand it. So when it mm. first happened, it really did bring it really dramatically improved literacy. For, that's one measurement, okay? Uh, because uh, now there was something that was covered. You could send your kids to. And um, sure, because you're comparing learn. to the opposite, which was nothing, right? right so right. of course, right. But I think that we are decades now deep into it's it's not been good at all. And in fact, because it's state sponsored, it hasn't moved, it hasn't changed. I bet you, if it was entirely market based, I think it would be so. It would look so different today, of course, than it does now. It's like it doesn't make any sense that past a certain age you continue to learn all these other subjects. Name one job where you need to know, besides teaching other kids, you know, in sixth grade, you know, name one job where it's not, where you know one skill really deep and then the other stuff you don't have to worry about. There's nothing like that, right? Yeah, right. So it doesn't make any sense that you're going to go and take all this, all these other subjects past a certain age, I guess. It also doesn't make sense that your kids go to school for mm. seven hours a day or six hours a day. You ever talk to homeschool? Unless you're a podcaster. You and, like and or <laughs> that we teach them all the same. We already know how different other people, everybody learns, right? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, what one group that fits that perfect mold gets educated well, I, the rest don't. I always find, I find it weird that you go to university now, you go to a university and they're like, here's the book you have to buy for this class. It's $300. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. What do you mean? I got to, first of all, that, it's a paper is book. It, is, are they still doing that? I know, yeah. right? Really? You still got to go how to do San that Jose stuff. State um, was funny I, like that, um, right? I think it's part of his tuition, but yeah, the, the, the <laughs> it's a racket. That's why it's, yeah. it's a total racket. I I, mean, I thought they got rid of that. I thought they were disrupting that already. They, they're starting to disrupt uh, it, okay. but it's like hilarious how, how slow it is. Today's program giveaway oh. is maps anabolic advanced. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video. The first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. These are also the final hours of our October sale. Maps bands half off and the hard gainer bundle of programs half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. You know, Wait. we haven't I haven't caught up with you on that uh, off air or on air. How is he liking school? Yeah, he's enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. the independence for sure. That, okay. You yeah. Feel, I mean, yeah. Cause he's got to, he can, you know, do his own stuff now. I mean, is this on. like, uh, I mean, and how are you doing that as a dad? Are you like, um, is this the, the, the longest stretches yeah. of time where maybe you won't, how many check-ins per week? Yeah. As I say, how often are you, are you bugging him? Oh, I call him, uh, most days and I'll call, I'll talk to him for like a minute or two, not even maybe like three minutes, um, or a text like, Hey, what's going on? How's today? That's all just to yeah. you know see what's going on. Uh, okay. But, um, and then the, the other day I FaceTimed him with, uh, with the family just to, I mean, what, of. what's the most different for you as a dad with that has a kid in college now? Um, just not seeing your kid. It's weird, you know, cause then you, 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 you don't see them. So they're not around. And then when you do talk to them or if you, when I do see him, you just, you miss them, you know, you just yeah. miss your kid because yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. otherwise I saw him, you know, cause every day. He, yeah. Almost. Well, most days. Right. Cause he was with his yeah. mom on the, the, the other half of the time. That's that's the tough part is your kid moves out, so it's like you said goodbye. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And you know, I, you're. I mean, obviously, you're really close and tied to the kids. And so, do you? Are you battling yet that struggle of as a dad, I want to see him more, and so any of his free time, you're wanting him to come that way, no. but then also like knowing that I got to let him kind of do his no, own. No, I like, think his mom struggles a lot more with that than I do. Yeah, I, I, I as I don't know if it's a dad mom thing, but I I want him to go, be independent. I want him to experience things. I want him to handle mm. his, like, I'll give you guys a silly example. <clears throat> when we dropped him off, his mom, she was so mad because he took one pair of shoes. <clears throat> now you guys know where he's at. And I don't want to go into details just in case, you know, whatever, but uh, where he's at, the weather can change quite a bit. So it can get, it can snow, it can whatever. And uh, she's like, you only took one pair of shoes. If it snows, you get real cold. And I kept telling him, but he didn't want to bring other shoes. I'm like, <laughs> he'll learn. Yeah. Then he's going to get cold <laughs> yeah. and he'll have, have to, to buy, buy some shoes. and adapt. She's like, I'm going to mail him the shoes. I'm just going to send them to him. Like, <laughs> yeah. don't like what? No. Like yeah. he needs to totally like, because that's how you build yeah. confidence. You just, you figure out a problem. Oh crap. This sucks. Out. My feet are Is that cold. such an like Italian mom thing, huh? Oh, like just to like God, take care of her bro. boy like that. Right. Oh, like, bro. I told you guys how I grew up. It was just, I didn't make my bed until I moved out. I mean, yeah. make my bed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just, it's so, so funny. Cause it's like this, uh, <laughs> It, it for it's good and bad, right? Like it also one of the things I think that's great about your your culture, your family, like you guys, especially being I have a very opposite, right? Um, is the the tightness, the bond, the yeah. the mm -hmm. like you you lean on your family, you yeah. know they got your back, you got their back. Like there's just this, 
incredible. Uh, well, you, you know, know what it is. Here's why. It's just, I don't think it's like this. Maybe it is still like this. But my parents are, they're also poor Sicilian. So it's even more like, you know, like like more traditional, I guess. And the, the reason why it was like that was the when you were a man, <coughs> when you got married, your wife took over all that stuff. So your mom did it for you. And your job was to go work and learn how to work. Right, right. And then when you met a wife, it's not like you needed to know any of this stuff because she would do all that stuff. So, so like my dad, I remember my dad would wake up in the morning and my mom would have his clothes out. I don't even think he knew where his clothes were for a long time. So now, okay. I swear to God, he would wake up. I remember, I never forget. I, I, I had I had one of my friends over and then my dad was yelling from upstairs for my mom. He's like, what's the matter? I'm like, oh, sh he doesn't know where his underwear are. Okay, but here because she would get his clothes out for him. You know? Here's a, here's a question I have for you, and you you're you are notorious for saying things like this, right? Like, you know, we should really look at things that have been passed down for generations yeah. and hundreds of years. The wisdom, culturally, the wisdom that's in of there. Of course, that is obviously something that's been passed down for yeah. hundreds of years. Not like your family was the first family to do that yeah. stuff. So, do you ever investigate that? Like, okay, okay, I'm in this new, you know. I'm in a different type of relationship and I live in these times. Therefore, this is how we do things. But it's like, hey, wait a second. My my family did do those things for a reason. Do you see the, obviously you see the drawbacks because you saw, like you said, oh man, I couldn't even do this and I couldn't do that. But do you also recognize probably some of the really- Well, let me ask you this, uh, you know, running a business. Is, does it, is it valuable where you and your partners know exactly what your roles are? You don't question the other person, you just rely on them and you just handle your business? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So families were run like that for a long time. It wasn't like disrespecting, by the way. My mom- No. My dad it's, it's took a care of- sense of pride. That my dad- sense of pride. He took care of his stuff. My mom never had to worry about it. My mom took care of the other stuff. My dad never had to worry about it. And they depended on each other and they valued and respected each other. They never treated each other it wasn't like my dad treated my mom like, mm -hmm. you know, like a, like a, like a, a bath mat or whatever. Or my mom was like, they respected each other, did their thing. And there was a division of labor and it was very effective. They raised four kids my, with, you know, no education, poor immigrants. And they did a very good job and it was very efficient and effective. And society has changed so much that the roles are not like that anymore. And I think it caused a lot of problems. Not saying it's necessarily worse, but... You got to then figure it out, whereas it's already outlined. It yeah. used to be outlined. It's just more confusing. Yeah, now it's like, wait. It blurs those lines a lot more. Yeah, you and who's doing more? You have to and outline it now, mm -hmm. redefine it. So, yeah, I, I totally get that. Yeah. Like, it's the simplicity. I think, yeah, I think that's kind of what every culture ends up, you know, adding a lot of complexity to things. Uh, and, I mean, it's, it's hard to reevaluate that when you think, like, we're progressing so far and more modern, like, ideas, but it's like, a lot of the traditional stuff, there was a lot of things they got right. Well, we, oh, we the big mistake we made being progressive like this was saying, was blurring all those lines and it being okay, but then not educating or helping our generation coming up on how do you, know, now how do you manage that? It well it's like, either, hey, we, we pushed you know. this agenda so much that, you know, the, uh, women can do this, men can do that. It doesn't matter and, all, and mixing it all up. But then you don't think like, okay, what are some of the challenges that come with that? And then how do you communicate with your partner to work that out? You just assume that everyone's just going to- do everything? Yeah. 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 And that's the part where I think we I'll, messed up because I do think that there's, I mean, I know in my household, like Katrina and I- I um, think you have to figure it out anyway. Right. Because yeah. she- You have to figure it out no matter what. She has, she has masculine <laughs> energy. I have feminine energy. That, that So there's different roles that we would consider, I would consider as flip-flop for traditional values. And we it works magically. But we also had to figure that out. Like there wasn't a blueprint. It's, you know, a, myth, talked it's about a myth it. that you and your partner are not going to have to, you're going to have to figure this out. Yeah. Whether <laughs> it was already defined or not, you're going to have to divide labor because you can't both be responsible for everything because that is problems. Yeah. And, but I, but that, that part isn't communicated. Issue. No, it's not. It's not communicated. No. It's just. And we took for granted that it was already. That's right. We defined. took for granted the positive of that, right? We, all we've talked about for the last 20 years is the negative stuff sure. of what that tradition did. Well, even worse, even worse, we made one side look like it was more valuable than the other. Right. In particular, and this is how, this is just, I, I think this is a travesty is that for a while, I remember this in, in school, uh, you know, like saying that you were a stay at home oh, mom yeah. was like, oh, something oh, really? You don't something. have a job? Yeah. Like you don't do anything? Like, so we've we've taken that and not saying one's better than the other, but we've made that look like for a long time, like it's not an important role. What? Yeah. 
That's, or like that's crazy. the breadwinner is the most important. That's the person that matters the most. No, no, no. So hold on a second. The most important job, in my opinion, is who's raising the kids the most. And yeah, and yes, definitely if you're the breadwinner, you need to have resources and stuff like that, whether that's the man or the woman. But you got you can you, you really gonna tell me that 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 go going and working for someone else is more valuable than raising your, your own children. I just had That's this ridiculous. I just had this discussion yeah. with my aunt, the one that I told you that <coughs> had, you know, the the five kids that all she homeschooled yeah. all of them and like she said she would share with me. So that she that was going on in the eighties when she was doing eighties and in the nineties. And I remember her you're just this was a current conversation. She telling me that um, how uh, uncomfortable it would be for her when they go do things with other couples and oh, to say she's a homemaker. Yes. Or, yeah, and then people, what do you do? You know, like, Oh, I, you know, I raised my kids. Oh, you don't work. You don't do anything like that. And she said that would be, it would be always, she'd always hate when we go somewhere like that, where she said that that would be the, the conversation because at that time, that was when like that, the big movement started to be like that. And she said it, they, a lot of people would look down upon that, that, Oh, she just stayed home and, and, did the kids and it was like, man, that's so dude. We had a friend unfortunate. Over. We had a friend over, good yeah. friend of ours, love this person. We had a friend over and um <clears throat> they they work, they also have kids and their circumstances requires like those types of things. And they asked Jessica, and I remember when I heard this, I was like, Oh God, because I could tell I was like, this is gonna annoy this annoyed me. I know it's gonna annoy Jessica. Hmm. They're like, Oh, so what do you do all day? Like you, like as if Jessica's got all this free time, <laughs> yes. and the kids are just over now there. You, like, you and she, justify, yeah, and, like, and you know, Jessica and I looked at each other, and she, you know, it's, I told her, I said, you know, honey, I think the reason why people say that is because I think, first off, some kids, some people raise their kids that way, where they come home from work, they put their kids in front of the TV, and they're not right. actively raising them. I'm like, they just don't have any idea how involved you are, because raising kids, yeah, you could definitely plug in an iPad and leave your kid and then sure. go surf the internet and do nothing. I mean, that's half the problems I think we're dealing with. Put them in the right little now. jumper by themselves forever. Yeah. Just like, no, no. Ooh. Like Jessica's I like, actually, I've seen that all day. Like, she's involved all day. She's involved raising the kids, making, you know, look, looking at what they're eating, what they're watching, teaching them, you know, looking at their physical development. Like it's an all day thing. It's not like she's, you know, she's home and the kids are over there. She's well, just, think about it. You're, yeah, you're, te you're drinking wine. You're technically, book, yeah. you're technically <laughs> a full-time teacher with no breaks, no days off and no, no clocking out. And, and you work. And as in much addition as to that, want, if you right? also yeah. manage the house, yes. keeping it clean, cooking, I mean, it's like, and then you're also running a full, full-time janitorial and house cleaning service yeah. on top of a full-time teaching. I mean, talk about, and crazy. It's crazy that we we devalued that as much as we did. And it's unfortunate because, and then also didn't talk about if we were going to blur all those lines, what does that look like? You know, if we're going to throw out all these traditional values, okay, what then in what is it going to, what's going to replace that? I mean, yeah. it reminds me of that conversation or that it, when we listened to Jordan Peterson talking about what he said about, uh, you know, church on Sundays yeah. with his kids, it's like, okay, that's fine. You don't have to take your kids to church. You don't have to be religious. That's fine. But what are you going to do in replace of that? what are you going to teach your kids as far as morals and values? And it's mm -hmm. like, fine. Okay. You can say what you want to say about a religion or religions or whatever, but then are you going to, are you going to pick up the rock? Are you going to pick it up from there and then make yeah. sure you spend the time? I just, I hate the whole, like, um, you know, the whole narrative where like my job is more important than your job or my job is more <laughs> prestigious or your job mm -hmm. is more prestigious. You know, every, anybody with who's ever been yeah, on a successful it's elitism, any, yeah, dude. Anybody who's been on a successful sports team or company or a band or whatever, you start getting that attitude, you're done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, if you play on a sports team and you think you're the most badass player of all, and it's yeah. just about you, you're done. Your Guess team's gonna lose. You're gonna not get the rock anymore. That's yeah. it. Yeah, Same thing with the, with the. You. So you could think you're such a badass. I'm the lead singer. You know, like bands. How, you know, every. Uh, you know, behind the scenes or whatever those, remember those, those, uh, documentaries. Behind the on, music. Yeah, behind yeah, the yeah, music. VH1. How do they always end, right? The yeah, lead yeah. singer thinks he's the most awesome guy in the world yeah, yeah. and then ends up breaking up the band because ego gets ends in the way. Ends up looking like, uh, <clears throat> with that, the granny from Goonies. You, you see Axl Rose, how yeah. he looks now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw he's that. Like, I saw he's that a little comparison. chunky and oh, yeah. he looks just like the, yeah. that, that, I mean, I think lady. that one of the things I think that has saved Katrina and I is that we both had that athletic background and that's exactly how I've always communicated. It's team, dude. It's like, it's the goal in life is to win, right? We're trying to win at life yes. and be really good at it. Part of winning at life is be, being successful, raising good children, being good humans, all these things, right? So if we look at that's the goal to win and you and I are a team, like 
does it really fucking matter if you bring the ball up the court or I do or sometimes you shoot it or I shoot it? Like, if we're scoring and we're winning, that's what matters. And mm-hmm. you ran a little faster that time than I did. Like, none of that matters. It's like, at the end of the day, like, and because she's got an athletic background, she gets that, you know what I'm saying? Especially since she was, a, a like, a key role player for a team, as not I was. Not only that, but to get to go even further, I, I learned this I, too late in life. I wish I learned this earlier, but people, this whole, like, 50-50 argument about uh relationships is bullshit because when you're You're together you plan on you plan on being together for 30 40 years okay are you really going to be able to contribute 50 percent that entire time you're not going to go through hardships you're not going to get ill you're not going to it's it's one person going to have to take on a lot in a certain moment there's a a, that's not even just the moment sometimes it could be years i mean like years or like whatever that looks like but then it it the it totally reverses and then you just got to flow with it because we all see eye to eye on that is the reason why this works. It's the number one thing when I talk to other CEOs and founders of companies and they go, wait, there's four owners that split. Like, how do you split the task up? And what do you do when (laughs) he's, what are you doing when you're, if you're working way more than the other guy or this, like you guys can't all equally work the same amount, but yet you have equal. And it's like, clocked out right now. like nobody, (laughs) I said, nobody's looked at it like that. Nobody has ever, each guy values each other so much that nobody is counting the minutes of contribution that this person is doing to it. It's the ultimate goal is to win. And so long as we're winning, uh, everybody is is happy and can and they're just like oh that's just so crazy. there's also there's also uh I also think you have to combine that with uh you know I I if if there's ever a moment where I can do something for the team here and it, whether whether that means I'm doing something like I'm flying somewhere or I'm doing some I actually am I like I find pride in it like mm-hmm. oh here's my opportunity yeah. to contribute in right. a way to the team where I can provide something <clears throat> I feel good about it. So I think you have to combine it with that as well. Not the whole, like, otherwise you get into the, like you said, where, well, he did that. I did this. And huh? Oh my God. No, you look for your opportunities yeah. and, and yeah, you contribute where you can. You remember when we first, when we, the, the, we originally did mind pump, we had a fifth partner and I'll never, this one, uh, this was a strong sign. It would never work with that other person. After we recorded a couple episodes, like, okay, so you talked the most the last episode, Sal. So now you're going to talk a little more, and then Just I'm going to do. To open this. Yeah. I'm going to do it, and all, ah. yeah, all of us are like, "What? <laughs> this is going to suck." I'm not good at that. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is going to suck if we start oh, dude. counting minutes. Who's doing the most crickets? You know, oh, in the background. Yeah. I know, but no, people, it, that's the kind of the natural default for a lot of people, though. I get asked that all the time. You know. Does it bother you? Like, you know, like everybody thinks it's Sal's company and this. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate that. That makes me so mad. Everybody. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Stupid. I Stupid. I think it's hey, I, I, I'll bring up something interesting. That's uh, I would love to hear you guys' thought. I mean, I know you guys are going to come to the same conclusion, but I read this study uh, and I know people get it, take it the wrong way. Right. So here's a study. Ready for this? Study says making your bed makes you 206% more likely to become a millionaire. All right. So what do you think is happening with that? I mean, that's, it's, that's an easy, all they're correlating is that you, you've built disciplines and habits and routines, yeah, right. which are extremely important to being <laughs> financially successful, yeah. fit, and many other things. Reverse cause it's a reverse causation. All right. So totally. it's like people are more likely to be successful are also more likely to make their bed. But yeah. how many, t- how many people you think reading that are like, I'm going to start making my bed. I know. That's going to make you I know. a millionaire. I that's know. the morning hack. Yeah. Know, it's like, yeah. There's something magical There's about guru. I mean, I, I would, that. it's a, it's back to our school conversation yeah. i think that's one of the the biggest most valuable things about school is the fact that you discipline especially when you go past like high school right when you actually yeah. have the option to go right when you go to college oh, to learn them yeah, yeah. Th- like the most important part is not what you learned in it it's literally that you disciplined yourself to get up every single morning, yeah. show up to the classes, do the work to pass the test and you didn't just do that for a week or two you did that for four years or longer those characteristics transfer into totally. so many other aspects of being successful in life. That is the hands down most valuable thing that totally. it offers. Unless you're into some very specialty degree where you had to, you know, let's say you're being a doctor and you got to learn a lot of things like that. But for the most part, and even then I would still argue that the, the behaviors that you and the disciplines that you, that you gained from doing that are probably the you most. You know, that's the valid. argument for, um, <clears throat> cause I know the military, I know medical school did this for a little while where they were, uh, they were adding limits, I think, or restrictions to how much you could have 
um, you, you know, when kids graduate medical school, they have to do residency. And in the old days, they, you would just, you would get destroyed. They would hammer you with hours, right? Mm -hmm. And they started putting limits on it. And I remember training a bunch of old school doctors and I remember them being so annoyed with that. I'm like, no, 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 what are they doing? They're not gonna prepare these guys. These people are gonna come out. They're gonna go in the ER, they're gonna crack. They need to like push them. And, and they remember them telling that. Uh, to me, uh, military, mm -hmm. the military has been doing that for a little while too, where they lower the standards or make it uh, yeah. safer, or easier. And then you hear people who go out and serve in war and are like, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. You go out You're to war, they're not going to care. Yeah. You got to, you got to go through the fire, <laughs> you man. You have to because, be a, a machine. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, speaking of, of limiting. So, you know, I've told you guys, uh, Max's thing with time. Two minutes, you yeah. have two minutes, like he has no cost. Is, yeah, 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 two minutes whatever. is just, that means it's time to stop. So it's <laughs> yeah. like, we that's the universal you got two more minutes and you're done with yeah. that. Two more minutes till it's dinner. Two more minutes. We got to go to school. Like everything's two minutes. Right. And so we're in the bath last night and whenever he loves when I take a bath with him, because that means dad's full time playing in the bath. Right. Yeah. Like that's all we do is act out characters and sounds and we're doing stuff like that. And honestly, sometimes I'm like, God, I just want to soak in the bath for a minute. Like I don't want to have to do this, but that's like, you know, whatever. Right. So that's my thing with him. So we're, we're playing and the kind of the routine is that him and I will do that for a while. That gives Katrina time to get everything ready for bed and do her thing. And then she'll come in when it's almost time to pull him out. She'll be like, all right, Max, two minutes you have left. Right. And he makes me do like the voices of the characters. And I got to like, I cannot just sit in there. Like I have to always be holding at least one or two. And if I set my hands down, he grabs my hands. It's like, no, no, you got to be this. And so we're, we're, we're doing the characters and stuff. And uh, Katrina came in, Max, two more minutes, two more minutes. Okay. Okay. Mommy. And then it gave me a break of character play for a minute. So I said, Hey, how was school today? Stop talking. He goes, stop talking. He goes, you're you're wasting minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Oh my God, Katrina like <laughs> fell over. She started laughing. So I was like, oh my God. That's the first time you ever told me that. Wow. Stop talking. Yeah, yeah. Stop talking, Dad. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, I'm just asking you how school is. You're wasting minutes. Oh, dude, <laughs> so, wasting. Back to character. Don't you love like, that? Oh yeah. It's like yeah. you you have to laugh, dude. It's just the stuff that they pick up, man, and then the, and then they repeat or say, and it's just like, dude. Yeah. He's definitely at that that fun. That fun age. Yeah, I, I do stories with Aurelia. She'll say things just, and I'm like, where did you learn? Yeah, like, where did you pick that up? Yeah, like he said, bodacious. <laughs> bodacious? <laughs> you know? And, and he's like, it was, sounds like a Ninja Turtle. And I couldn't, cartoon. at first I thought I'd understand. I'm like, what are you saying? What are you saying? And I'm like, are you saying bodacious? He's like, yes. I'm like, what? Yeah. And then it was from uh, Kung Fu Panda. Okay. In the very beginning, like the opening, <laughs> he talked about his bodacious like skills or something. And that's where he got. Yeah. He also understood electrocute. I was drawing characters for him. He loves it when I tell yeah. stories about monsters, which is cool because I love telling monster oh, yeah. stories. So I drew them out for him. I made like an ice monster, a rock monster. It's always a cool team, by the way. I'm really good at these, by the way. Mm. You guys should come, okay. come over. I'll have, to, I'll have to look at your Yeah, skills. so that like combining their powers and this yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. I drew an electricity monster. Mm. And he goes, oh, Papai's going to electrocute. He's going to electrocute the other guy. You're like, how do I'm you like, know what? that? How'd you know that? That's what that means. <laughs> That's when he, when he understands concepts, I told you guys the bring home the bacon one the other day. I'm like, how in the world would yeah. you even know that? We we're playing his, of course, we're always playing Mario and Bowser with that. And he's like, ah, vampire Bowser. I'm like, vampire Bowser. There's no vampire Bowser. Daddy, I'm using my imagination. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. fair. Yes, you are. I'm like what? I, yeah. the, just uh, the fact that you understand that concept, you know what I'm saying? I think that's so hilarious. Yeah. Dude, I told you guys about the coloring books I got for everyone. Oh, the Walmart found, people. Yeah, yeah. So we also found some um like band-aids just because I was like, these band-aids are lame. They gotta have something cool. They have like literally like bacon strips. Like, so you put it on, it looks like bacon strips. <laughs> I'm like, what what else do they have on the internet? We're like going <laughs> yeah. through all this stuff. I'm like, what if I was a kid and I wanted to like find something re really stupid uh -huh. and, and silly? You know, dude, there's so many great options. He was like taking me through all this stuff and we're like buying stupid. You know crap. what side hustle I want to do? And this is so bad that we, we created this monster is uh, the, the little round basalt bath salts do you guys bath ever bombs. bath bombs yes okay and they have like a toy inside of them oh what yes this is like and i they're and they're not what that it's like foam ones that kind of expand yeah you so, throw it in there and it just uh, yeah, it yeah, just yeah. dissolves right yeah. it's a bath it's a it's a bath bomb or whatever it, but inside of it is a is a toy and th that's been like the traditional thing that everybody buys him and so he loves hmm. loves those things and i don't even know what the price is on them but they're not 
They're definitely the margin's got to be huge. Yeah, the margin's got to be huge. <laughs> and it's soap. You could totally, okay, I so want to do this. So maybe somebody figure out how to make this. They look like they're pretty basic to put together. And what a brilliant way to recycle. I mean, I must have thousands of these little itty bitty toys that he wouldn't even know is gone. Turn right around and make my own and then turn around and flip and sell those things. <laughs> I bet you, you could, I bet you there's an at home way to make yeah. them. They are. Where you can I, just make it yourself. There is. There is a way to do it. I know. Look it up, Doug. I know. I, and how to they, make your own <clears> bath bomb. And I know they're not, it can't be expensive. It's it's basically salt hopefully, and hopefully turn into crazy. like PCP or something. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully it doesn't get flagged again. Those are turn into zombies. <laughs> Doug's looking up all kinds of crazy shit. Math bomb. Uh, no, I've seen people like on Etsy and stuff that are doing this. Have you art. seen the ones for adults that um, you put them in the shower and then they let out like eucalyptus or whatever? To yeah, like vapor. Open up your yeah, yeah I've done cool. the Vicks cool. one before when I was sick. Oh, you did? You mm -hmm. remind me of like, I remember bath toys that were like really uh, simplistic and it, I don't know if you remember, they were like in pills and you like put it in there and then they expanded yeah. to like foam dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah those are awesome. Yeah. I liked bath toys and these are the ones I still get for my kids that like uh, motorboats and submarines and shit like m that yeah. actually go through the water. Yeah, and like sharks. <laughs> Did you know you can make, so you can make a paper boat and put a little piece of soap in the back and that'll propel it. Do you guys know that? No. If you put it in water because it breaks the surface tension, you know, soap does that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it'll, it'll scoot itself around. There's uh, a like doing your yeah what yeah oh, that's what? a nice little dad yeah. hack. Did yeah. you look up and make it make it yourself? Yeah, there's a YouTube video. See, so, uh, it's so there's easy. always a YouTube. Video. I think they sell for a couple bucks per ball, and I bet you can make them for nothing. How to make kids toy surprise for the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah. Is that what it said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this will be fun. I'm yeah. gonna make this. Yeah. Tell me like this. Okay, and I have so many of these <laughs> tiny little toys laying around that I could totally redo it. I'm like, yeah. why are, I told Katrina, why are we getting, she's like, we don't buy them. People buy them from like all his family buys them. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, good. Cause I don't want us wasting money on this. This is crazy. Cause mm -hmm. we could literally recycle it. He would not be the wiser. Cause a lot of times he gets the same ones over anyways. Yeah. See, look at seven ninety nine. For They're what? not for, for one. one. Oh, it's a Hot Wheels one. That's uh, why. Yeah. But uh, I mean, even the other car, in ni a nine pack for 24. That's, they're not cheap. You know, what's funny. I'm like, oh man, I'm like hearing you guys. I'm like, I missed that, you know, that window. Like I'm gone. I'm over. I'm gone. Right. Yeah. My kids are too old. But the Hot Wheels, like we actually uh, reinvigorated, like Everett does like this track. So we have this whole, like all the way from up on top of this, like the old orange ones from, yeah. So you know how the big drop off from my back deck, like it goes down, like we have one going from the deck and then all the way down oh, and then sick. like, and like jumping it and stuff. And I'm like, dude. I'm like, and he's 10, he's almost 11, but he's like still into that kind of stuff. I'm like, Ooh, you know, it's have you fun. seen, have you guys seen, I, I would never do this cause I don't know how to do it, but you, you might be able to, have you ever seen people make little, uh, roller coaster tracks in their backyards? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah They're yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. I've seen some pretty cool ones Yeah, where like, it's all by momentum. So you get at the top and a good rolls. welder. Yeah. I've seen people like make like some serious tracks. Yeah. They, yeah. Oh, I, I can't imagine that being cheap though. No, no I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about well, oh yeah. Without having that skill, like you need that skill to be able to weld like that, to be able to do that. Gonna, take some time off yeah. you guys. I'm making it. You don't want to mess up on it. All right, kids. Oh shit. What happened? What happened to your kid? I don't think Katrina would let me do something like that. Hey, I wanted to call comment on something because uh this is such a in our space well and i think in every space a telltale clue um or you know sign that you're crushing is when other companies begin to copy you and then attack you right ah. so if you come out with a product and both at once you come out with a product and you start to, but as when you start to make waves is when and you know is when other companies come out with copycat products are you guys seeing all the copycat element Products, all the element oh, yeah, copy. Yeah. Electrolyte powders now all of a sudden. I've seen some really stupid ads. Yeah. Like, oh, this is too much salt. And this is uh, That's the whole point. Yeah. That's why I know, I know that's why. I think oh, you mean the Doctor Integrity oh, one? Efficacious. Is that who did that one? Doctor it was Doctor Integrity, yeah. Uh, God, yeah. he's so irrelevant. He's a winner. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he's, he's a winner. Yeah. It's too much sodium for what? For he needs to stick with gummy bears and just go away. Yeah, you know, I actually you know, he's been quiet. I don't know, maybe that's because we all got blocked from all his stuff, and so I don't see a lot of it. But when we first started, I, he was uh, popular in the space like, he was. a lot. Like, yeah. I heard a lot of his name thrown around. We went on a, 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 other than this, you're bringing him up right now. Like, I can't remember the last time I'd even seen him. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Well, two, what was the, the one guy that just recently got, uh, he was the primal 
Uh, oh yeah, yeah, liver king, uh, liver king. Liver king guy. Like, haven't heard from him. Since, oh, right? somebody yeah. did a post on him. He's like, I'm a, I've been natural now for three months. <laughs> <laughs> Looks the same. Like, well, are you? Are you really? I wonder if we're gonna see him at I the still Olympia. poop once a day and I don't wipe. You think we'll see the liver king? And I don't know if he's an Olympia type of guy or not. I don't know who's gonna. I actually, we've announced that, and I actually haven't heard a lot of people uh, tell me that they're gonna be there. I wonder if because it's in Florida that we'll. Uh, I mean, I, I, we still have a huge following in Florida, so I would think we would. But how? Maybe remember that. Remember when we had? Uh, who was it? Did we have someone on the show? Or you brought up? Uh, I think it was Jeremy Buendia or somebody, right? Yeah. Like a, a bodybuilder, yeah. like person. Oh, it was at a live event. Yeah, and everyone was like silent. No one knew who he was. Yes. No, yeah, I know. And so I was like, you know, awkward. maybe like our we we as a like a podcast is just completely moved away from that space. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, we have some competitors. I know we have some of them in our inside of our forum, and we just talked about Grace today. Well, right? the Olympia I mean, is not just bodybuilding anymore, though. It's been now fitness for a long right, time. You're right, but it's still known for that. It is. You know what I'm saying? That's still the big. You know what I can't wait to do? Hmm. This is what I I've, so I've been to a couple Arm of these wrestle somebody. No, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you do want to do that? No, I don't. No. Maybe I really enjoy doing this at these conventions. What's that? Mm-hmm. Eating all, all the supplements. Taking all the Thank supplements. You. <laughs> Doug, Doug knows exactly. <laughs> yeah, because you know like why? Halloween for him. They're handing said. out so many packets of things, and um, what I do? Can we put a blindfold on you and just like see what you think it is? It doesn't matter. So I'm gonna take everything at the yeah, same time. Okay. So we don't know <laughs> what's down the hatch. We don't know what's gonna happen. Speaking of taking things, Justin, you were mentioning uh element yeah. with your headaches i was yeah and so what happened well um i remember i don't know if it's a study i was reading but like it was because originally like the caffeine and then the the aspirin combo or whatever yeah. like that was kind of like the go-to because i get really bad severe headaches but like the dehydration component there and like the intramuscular uh water uh like all this stuff like i guess the the more um you're uh, deficient in salt, like too, that, that adds into like, uh, headaches. And I, I used to get them all the time. I don't get them much anymore, but like sometimes they get really like powerful headaches. And so I decided this time to try, you know, uh, maybe like drinking some element tea and it totally helps. Yeah. Look up the stuff. Th- there's studies on it. Look up, uh, migraines and sodium. And mm-hmm. there's a very strong, uh, correlation and several studies on that. Jessica gets migraines so bad that they're frightening. Like when she was a kid, I, she used to get them. And you she guys had, tried like green light and all kinds of stuff. Everything. Huh? Yeah. She, when she was a kid, in fact, she was so young when she first started getting them that they got, you know, they did MRIs and stuff. Getting ice again, wow. pretty bad too. And uh, Element, Element T's made a big difference. She'll still get them, <clears throat> but I'm trying to think now. It's pretty rare now. When I was first with her, it would happen once a month where mm-hmm. she would get a headache so bad. It's like she wants to pull her hair out. Like mm. it's really, really bad. Yeah. Now she'll get a headache, but not quite uh to that point yeah i think it was when my blood pressure was like really high and i had issues that was a contributor mm. uh so when adam but, gave you that that tumor <laughs> from all the supplements you do. Doug, what, do you know I'm the number live do you know uh what booth number we're at when we're at the uh, con- at the olympia 1301 1301 yeah that's friday the 3rd of november from 10 a.m to 2 p.m and then from 12 to 4 on saturday the oh 4th. two days were there yeah 10 to 2 two days is gonna be a good time four hours yeah. okay. oh hey adam i want to bring this up to you did you hear what netflix is gonna be doing what i'm I... surprised because you're like so big on this kind of I stuff don't know, I'm, i don't know what well, tell me so in 2025 netflix will be opening its first physical location known as netflix houses no, I did not know that. Yeah, so with a mix of retail, food, and live theatrics, the houses will be something of a modernized experience first theater. Live theatric? Like like actors? So like to give an example, <clears throat> visitors will be able to try a squid game obstacle course, for instance. Oh, Interesting. Yeah, so so it's probably like you'll be able to watch maybe like new releases there that are not on Netflix. Right, like, yeah, you'll I, be able to imagine and, imagine uh, going to this makes a lot of sense. Like imagine going to a place like uh, what's the one that you guys all love that you you especially Stranger Things. Yes, like a Stranger Things themed house. Oh yeah, and go watch like the premiere. I see. Or what a great way yeah, to get their hardcore fans. Yeah, right? yeah. you already have it built in, right? So you have these hard so, event the, attached huh. to it. 
This to me, then you serve popcorn, like almost like its own movie theater type yeah. of experience think, with more stuff. Stranger I Things think, would crash, hundred percent. And I think that this will be the because theaters are already are trying to figure out what the hell to do because people are going to the movies less and less. You do have to do some kind of new entertainment involved. It has yeah. to be an experience, not yeah. just watching something because everybody watches things. On yeah, TV. imagine you go watch the like you could go watch the episodes at like one of these houses. Like maybe can... maybe they're released like a couple days early, or maybe yeah. the day that they're released. Like you're a hardcore fan, you want to go watch it with a hardcore core fans yeah and there's like things there besides just watching sure like some of the actors dressed up in costume and all that yeah. Cool. yeah interesting yeah, yeah. Interesting. we'll see what happens that's 2025 that's going to be a big um a big risk but i think netflix i believe it, it's going to crush that's what i think yeah no that's uh that's really interesting i you know what i was i was let down on the um the old dads oh i don't watch it, it was bad it wasn't bad it was just meh Really? Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, dang. Yeah, I, I thought it was going to be a lot better. Was it too predictable? It was too... Because so, the trailer made me think it was a little predictable. So, well, I mean, there's, it's obviously... I mean, it's all very predictable. There's nothing at all, like, that you couldn't figure I'm out. sure it's way different than his stand-up, like, the so, material. So I thought it was going to be funny because they, they definitely kind of came after woke culture. Yeah. Um, and But they tried too hard to come after woke culture that it was like they made every example they could have like extreme mm -hmm. okay which it was a comedy so i get why you kind of did that and i don't know it was it was a, a over the top dumb in that in that mm -hmm. sense and so i thought man it could i think i think bill burr's funny enough as it is i think the dynamic between the other comedian guys could have been good just by having like a more real normal story but i think they they like double and triple down. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, I was, was looking forward to. Watching I don't know. It. I'm curious for you. I mean, it's it's you I'll guys still will still watch it. Yeah, yeah, still watch it. Like it's worth to like watch it. Like because there are some funny parts in it. But I I was really excited about. it. I thought, oh, this is gonna be really funny. And I thought it the was premise like, is great. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's what I thought. I thought the premise was pretty good. And I thought, oh, we need something like this to kind of like poke at it a little bit. But then even even I thought it went like a little too far. Like okay, well that's like too it's too extreme. Really? Yeah. Ah, so darn it. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. Yeah, we'll I'll see. watch it. Yeah, I want to hear what you guys think, so we can talk about it afterwards. I'll watch it. You know what? Um, I'm really interested. I'm watching right now just to make a little bit of a left turn, and I don't know if you're talking to your your family uh, that are all in, in finance in money, but this is the month when all of the uh, the school loans are turned back on. Oh. So during the pandemic, oh, they suspended them. Yeah, they suspended and deferred all of it, oh. and so that's going to be like the average person. How many people do you hmm. want to bet took that pause and instead of saving that money, spent, spent it? it? Of course, you you Majority. you add that to God, a lot of the, so funny with their the companies that got all kinds of money on low interest rates that are all coming back around to eight percent. So the prediction is that, or my prediction, I'm going to say is that, you know, they've been talking about like soft landing, soft landing. But if this was the last interest rate hike, which we still might see one more in November, but let's say it, it's not one more. If you look back historically on all the major recessions that we had, it doesn't technically happen until 11. There's a lag. Yeah. 11 months lag mm -hmm. after the last interest rate. And so we've been raising the interest rate, interest rate, raising, raising, I saw raising. that video you sent. It was interesting because the the Fed, people who work for the Fed s said that there's like a 10% chance there's going to be a hard recession. And then they, Bank of America, 20% of them then said it was going to be a hard recession. And then they then they interviewed CEOs, 80 something percent yeah. said, oh no. And it was Patrick Bed David. And he goes, mm -hmm. I wonder why 80 something, maybe because they know what their debt is going is looking like with the new <laughs> yeah, exactly. interest rates. And no, they can't pay it because yep. it's going from 3% all the way to like 8% and knowing that like, well, we can't make up on that. I didn't rise to how many, I did you catch the part two where a lot of these guys did where they loaned money at 3% and then they turned around and were, uh, uh, investing it and getting six percent. No. Yeah, yeah. And oh, goes, that's great. That's all going to get upended, right? Because that they they were it was like, hey, take all this money while the banks are giving it to you at three percent. You could turn right around, reinvest it, make six yeah. percent. So you're making three percent on not even your money, and that game that game is up. So you'll no longer be able to do that, and so all those people will have to give back that money, and so. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens this this coming year right now. Because well, I we, think what another thing that's interesting is I don't know if you guys saw the legislation that European Union's trying to pass uh, to to regulate internet, basically. And it, I mean, it, isn't Canada going through that right now? It is, but you throw Europe on top of it, huge market, 
Oh, um, yeah. And essentially what it's saying is that they're going to be able to go through your algorithm. They're going to be able to decide. Essentially, the language allows them to decide what is considered misinformation or not, which, which you know, we know yeah. where that, where that yeah, could lead. So lead we'll, it to a few. We'll see what happens, dude. Decide for us all. I, I think the market will respond with people using, you know, VPNs and sites that are going to be skirting around it type yeah. of deal. But the big dogs, they're going to get fined. If they break these these rules, mm -hmm. they could get fined up to 6% of their annual revenue worldwide. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Now, okay, because Starlink <clears throat> is a whole different thing, right? Like, uh, would people technically be able to kind of do workarounds where they could then uh, use like something like that to, to get access to the internet and like well, bypass it. Well, oh, you said VPN. Well, to give but, an example, like Google, um, like uh, 20 something percent, I don't know how, what percentage, but huge, they have a lot of employees in Europe. Right. So mm -hmm. that's where they would have the power as they'd say, we can impose these things in your offices. Oh, I see. In Europe. In the workplace. And, yeah. And so micromanaging. This is terrible. Europe. This is terrible, by the way. Um, I get that there's the some things speech. and the way that what they do is they, they, of course they package it with stuff that everybody agrees upon, right? Like we're going to try and stop oh, yeah. child pornography. We're going to try and stop like, we all know, agree human trafficking. Things, yes. But the language basically is like, we decide what is right and wrong. Uh -huh. Um, and I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to put the, the, the toothpaste back in the tube. They're like, uh Oh, we don't control the narrative like we used to. Mm -hmm. We need to clamp down on, you know, these huge internet companies and we need to, we're going to see this for a few years until like, yeah. they realize that it's way too far beyond their reach. I don't know. We'll I see hope. what happens. All right. So the shout out Jim, Jim quick. quick. Yep. Jim quick. Do we have his, uh, Instagram? Good old Jimmy. Yeah. Great. You know, I, we had him on the show recently, haven't aired the episode. Um, but I really enjoyed that last interview. I can't wait till we release it. It's we really got to know him. Yeah. yeah, that was probably, I mean, this is now the third time mm -hmm. that we've linked up. First time in and out, didn't really get to know him that much. Second time we had a good, I think, Zoom one. And then this is the third time. That My favorite we, one. I agree. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, and I think what that, you know, what, and you, what people hear him talk about it in the episode is that uh, you assume he's this big extrovert because of TED Talks and all mm -hmm. the stuff that he does, but he's really an introvert by by nature, you mm -hmm. know, and so it took a couple of times of hanging out with him before I think he kind opened of up. opened up a little bit. Yeah, and so I think we got to see I mean, you want, you want to learn how to learn, how to <coughs> memorize, how to improve your memory, your recall. Uh, his techniques are, are exceptional. Yeah. That's what's made him so big. But Jim Quick is uh, Quick is K, K-W-I-K. -K. Check him out. All right, check this out. There are natural products and ingredients that have been shown in studies to improve blood flow. Now, this is good for athletic performance, but it's also good for performance in the bedroom. By the way, there's a company called Joy Mode with only clinically proven substances that will improve your performance, again, in the bedroom. Go check them out. Go to usejoymode.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get 20% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Michaela from Florida. Hi, Michaela. How can we help Hello, you? Hello. How are you guys? Great. Great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. What's your question? Um. So my question was about adding more density and width to the lateral part of my quads. Um. To give a little bit of background, I am in like upcoming wellness competitor. I'm going into essentially a redo of my rookie amateur season. I went through a full prep. There were some issues with uh, coaching and me not being ready because of dishonesty with the coach that I was working with. Um, and so the leaner that I got, the more that we realized I had good mass um, in the intermediate and medial part of my quad, but not in my lateral. Um, and I'm in a growth phase right now. My legs are growing, but my lateral is super, super, super stubborn. Um, and so that's the biggest issue that I'm having um, with growth. And so I'm kind of wondering what I can do as far as um, growing that part of my leg. I love bodybuilding coaches. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, okay, so, <laughs> you know, there, with some muscles, there's more you can do in terms of shaping 
the actual muscle itself. And with other muscles, there's not a lot, okay? It all depends on the insertion and origin and the action of the muscle. So a good example of a muscle that I can really have a lot of influence over the shape of it would be like the pecs because where it inserts at the, at the sternum, there's a lot of insertion points there at the sternum. So I can go upper, middle, and lower. With the quads, you have very little that you can do. Now, some studies will show you can activate, you know, because what you're looking for is what they would call the sweep of the quad. This is what mm -hmm. bodybuilders refer to as a sweep, right? The teardrop being the inner part and the sweep being the outer part. And I mean, if we go based off the studies, uh, you know, where we'll see a little more activation of one or the other, you're probably going to go with more of a narrow stance with your squats and your leg presses. If you want more of the teardrop, you're focusing on the stretch part. More of the squeeze at the top uh, would maybe get the more lateral part with like a leg extension. But leg mm -hmm. extension is not a big muscle builder to begin with. So I'm always, you know, weary of some of these studies because I'm like, okay, so you see more active. Like those activation studies don't mean a whole lot. Um, to me personally, because I've seen studies that say this activates more of this area, but then I know for a fact there's other exercises let, that are superior. Let, so let me give you what what's really going to move the needle here, and what really fucking matters. That these bodybuilding coaches try and they try and make themselves seem so much more valuable by oh, if we do this, you know, pigeon toe your right foot in while you do this exercise, we'll yeah. get more of this part of it. It's like here, let me ask you. I'm going to name some exercises that I think are, are tremendous and have ter tremendous value. Uh, walking uh, barbell lunges, Bul Bulgarian split squats, single leg uh, leg press, uh, sumo deadlifts. Of those exercises I just listed off, which one do you neglect the most or which one do you do the most? Um, I do walking lunges every single quad focus leg day. Okay. I actually sumo deadlift and kind of work in like a powerlifting style into – um, most of my leg days, especially okay. on my hamstring focus. Okay. Um, I think the one that I probably neglect the most is Bulgarians. Okay. Um, and single leg leg press. Beautiful. There's yeah. those two movements. Add those into your routine. Get fucking strong as shit on those two things. You know what'll make the biggest difference on stage is going to be how you present your body, because mm -hmm. a really good competitor on stage knows how to present their body to accentuate their, their, you know, to, their strengths and to hide their weaknesses. You can mm -hmm. do this with your quads quite a bit. So what you would do is look in the mirror, watch how you position your foot, how you bend your knee, how you flex your quad and see which one seems to make a difference in terms of the appearance. That'll make a far bigger difference than trying to develop one part of the quad more than the other. I mean, if you look at the anatomy of the quad, um, the, 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 where they, where the muscles attach, they're so close to each other and they really, what do they do? They, they extend the knee. There's some stability going on laterally too, but they really just, they really just extend the knee. So all mm. exercises that extend the knee are working all heads, uh, of the quadriceps. So that, let, that's why I'm saying like, like this is like one of those splitting hairs things. Like it's really annoying that bodybuilders will talk about. Um, and, and generally what they find is the one that develops the quads the most is the one that gives them the look that they're looking for. This is exactly why I went. The reason yeah. why I asked you the question I asked and the reason why I gave that quick advice on what is going to make the sweep of your quad look better is nothing is going to make your quads look better than developing your quads. Period. Nothing is going to build more muscle in the area that you want than exercises that put on the most muscle in the quads. This mm -hmm. idea of let's do an exercise, let's say on a machine and position your foot inward while you do yeah. a leg extension, you are only going to build a, a fraction of the muscle you will build by doing Bulgarian split squats. You, yeah. If you don't do Bulgarian split squats, go get fucking strong on that and you'll build way more yeah. of a sweep than you will ever doing any specific exercise to target the sweep of your quads yeah. yep. because every quad exercises incorporates all of the quad. So this idea that some of these bodybuilding coaches have where they're like, oh, we're going to hit this one little area and think that you're going to develop that much. Like it's a big muscle. And if you want it to be more pronounced, the best thing we could do are exercises that's going to do it. Sounds like you're already doing a lot of good ones. I'm sure you're doing barbell back squats. I'm sure you're doing mm -hmm. front squats. You said you're doing walking lunges with barbell. Those are all killers. And I just assume you were doing those. So yeah. I didn't bring them up, but I'll tell you some other good ones is a single leg leg press. Cause you can get really heavy at that and you'll notice that development in there and doing unilateral work because 
when you get really good at bilateral work, like being a power lifter, it's less about sculpting a, a, the body and focusing on that muscle. It's more about moving the most weight you possibly can. So you doing some unilateral heavy loading type stuff is going to be great for that. That's why I said single yeah. leg press, Bulgarian split squats. Watch what that does to your quads yeah. by you just focusing on and, those and things. And slight elevation of your heel will give you more quad in all those exercises. So like if you wear squat shoes, yeah where your mm -hmm. heel is elevated a little bit, it'll give you more knee flexion and extension, meaning you're going to get more quad activation with your heels slightly lifted. So you want more quad focus when you're doing your leg exercises, your mm -hmm. squats or leg press, whatever, wear squat shoes, and that'll give you a little bit more and, quad activation. And the biggest difference that squats. makes, uh, you know, client A versus client B, there's the sweep of their quad or the the, the width of their shoulders, like genetics. it's genetics. Mm -hmm. Like your quads look the way they do, not because you're not good at doing certain exercises. It's because genetically, that's how your quads are built up. And you getting as lean as shit is going to show the best version of your quads. And if you want to develop a part of the quads, it's the it'd be developing yeah. any part of the quads. Yeah. What can we do to build your quads in general? So for me, if I have a, a, an experienced lifter like you who's already doing a lot of good stuff, I'm looking for novel big bang exercises that I could get you to do and get good at. And if you told me Bulgarian split squats are ones you don't do a lot, of, you don't put a lot in, it's like, uh, let's go get strong in that. Now and this, I'll show you this how advice is for the quads, right? So if you ask this about the shoulders, yeah. Well, I can give you exercises that are going to hit the lateral, the you know, the, the front, the side, or the rear. Um, if you tell me chest, I can do more upper, middle, or lower. But with the quads, it's not really, it's not really, the, the focus is not going to really yield you any results. You're much better off just really developing the quads. But I would still, okay. I would still even, even talking, maybe the shoulder's a little bit different because you have the, the rear and the front. Yeah. But chest, even I would say the same thing is like, if you want a, 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 the lower part of your chest to be developed, let's just say, and you never do incline chest press, I would say go do incline chest press, even though they would, someone who is a biomechanics nerd would be like, oh, well, that's not targeting more the lower part of the chest. Yeah. That's more the upper chest. I I know that, but I know that if that's an exercise you never do and it's novel, you're going to get the most growth in your chest from that, which will also make the lower part of the chest look good. These same rules apply when we're talking about the glutes. Yeah, but you, but the you get the point, right? It's, I mean, that's, you, you get the point where we're trying to make, right, Michaela? Yeah. Yeah. And, and now the second part of your question has to do with the hamstrings. I don't think so. Did I? Yeah, it says pr protrusion of my hamstrings. You're looking for that too. Oh, okay. So yeah, that was about two months ago when I said that. And that's when I started adding in sumo deadlifts oh, to awesome. oh, my good. hamstrings. And my growth in my posterior chain skyrocketed. Oh, there, excellent. And mm -hmm. right there is an example of what we're talking about yep. right now. Yep. Like you could get somebody who might go like, oh, yeah. you want the- Standing in, leg curl. You, or yeah, like yeah. You want the insertion of the, the hamstring to that glute, that tie-in. Oh, we should do more of this donkey kickbacks or we should do more. Like they'll give you some specific yeah. exercise that targets that area better. But you know what you did? You went and did a big bang for your buck exercise that you didn't do a lot of and you saw incredible results in your hamstrings. Totally. Same rule applies with what we're talking about right now. Like that's the Perfect. secret secret sauce when you're trying to develop a, a muscle to look a certain way. Bodybuilder coaches and, and bodybuilders in general will go like this. Let's look for this exercise that like targets it's more. No, what will do it is finding what is a good exercise for that muscle in general that you don't ever do or don't do a lot of. Go get good at it. That's going to build the most there. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, you got it. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. you got I'm it. Yeah, uh, they get carried away with that whole um, sculpting and shaping. I, like I said, some muscles you, you have some control, right? We use the deltoids, the chest. It's not arguing that. Yeah, but I'm, but I'm, no, but like some like other muscles, it's like they'll they'll do this with biceps. You know, this hits the outer part. This hits the inner part. They'll do this with all kinds of other muscles. Some muscles it makes sense. Triceps. If you stretch the tricep, you'll get more long head activation but you know i wouldn't even do that until you got really big ass let's, developed muscles okay here listen let's use your because the shoulders may has the best argument for kind of where you're going yeah. let me let me let me even round this out even more you do uh front dumbbell raises you do lateral raises you do rear flies in the equal amount and that's what you've done to shape your shoulders up that's all you do and you come to me and you say adam i want to build my rear delts <laughs> go overhead press, bar overhead press. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go barbell overhead press. Or row. Why? Because it's a big, gross motor movement. It's going to pack on the most yeah. muscle on your shoulders, and you're not even doing but it. Also, you got to you know you got to keep in mind like a lot of this advice comes from very well developed 
bodybuilders. Like when you get to a point where you that's, got that's really big in the gym all day long. Now, yeah. now you start to play with. Okay, I got to do. I got to start every workout with the rear flies, right? But hundred percent because yeah, that because that because that guy isn't missing Bulgarian squats. Yeah, yeah. he's not missing. Right. And he's doing all those things, and he's still in the fucking gym yeah, for his second yeah. time at, right. of his fourteen his times. Time. Yeah, he's going to yeah, show up to the gym that yeah. week. So it it makes a little bit of sense to do some of this like little movement stuff. But when I talk to the average person who's trying to get into bodybuilding or they've only done one or two yeah, shows, it's like this getting this and it's a way for bodybuilding coaches to sound smarter than what they really are it's yeah. like let me let me show you what i know about anatomy and biomechanics of an exercise and oh you feel that we're hitting the sweet it's not board. even though yeah. it's not even anatomy and biomechanics it's uh bro science is what i mean a lot of times bro it is. sometimes there's some i mean there's like shout out to people like the hypertrophy coach i think he's got incredible right. like right. If, very very smart guy and stuff like that but and in the the points that he makes on his in his social i think is is very valid for his audience that he's talking to i just i've well i've dealt with both high level competitors and average population my right. my career and i know that most even competitors are missing out on some of the stuff that I would coach the general population what, on first. What is this wellness category? Is this new? It's a new category. Yeah, so it was like there was figure. It's between figure and bikini. So figure got really like too shredded. Yeah, then bikini was, came in. That started getting too shredded. Then they brought in wellness. So, so it's a little bit more soft. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be more healthy. I mean. And, and for them, it, when they do this, every time they open up a new category that is more that seems more attainable. It exaggerates the rest of them. They well no, they 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 attract more competitors. They mm -hmm. grow every time you do that. And yeah. this is like the, this is this is they figured this out when they first introduced physique. Yeah. They introduced physique and all of a sudden all these people wanted to compete again, you know, on stage cuz you look at bodybuilder physique. And, yeah. yeah. Well, and now they have classic bodybuilder which is in between uh, bodybuilder and physique. Yeah. Our next caller is Bobby from Virginia. Bobby, what's, what's up? up? Bob? Hey, you look familiar. Hey, good morning. I get that all the time, but I've never seen you all. <laughs> oh, wow. Really? Oh, I totally thought maybe you called in before. No shit. No, 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 no. I get I, but I get this everywhere I go. So oh, um, join the crowd. All right. But, uh, all right. Hey, thanks for having me on today. You guys, I really appreciate your show and everything I've learned from you so far. Cool. So go ahead and jump into that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, what's your question? What's your question, buddy? Man. Okay. So just a little background. Um, in 2020, I found myself at 354 pounds. Um, started making a body decision, um, mainly because of a surgery. That's how I found out how heavy I was and uh, got myself down to about 195. And when I wrote you this question, I was going to um, join a body fit um, challenge to try to get myself from what I was at, at the time, a 9.5% body fat down to see if I could get myself to like five or below or whatever. Wow. I, I decided to forego that event at this time just due to listening to you all and, and everything. But I, I, so I started MAPS Anabolic. And uh, I've gone from about 195 to about 205, and that's just been in the pre-phase um, wow. thing. So I, I, I'm freaking out a little bit because that's a lot of weight. You know, I mean, again, I have this kind of mental thing now after losing so much weight, but um, um, I, I haven't tested my body fat yet. Uh, I'm going to do it next month um, just to see where I'm at, just to make sure that I'm, you know, am gaining muscle. I feel like I am because of strength and, and size of clothes and that sort of thing, but. Uh, um, Anyways, I'm 45, six foot five, so I know I, my body can probably take on a lot more uh, muscle and pounds. But again, um, so I, I wanted your recommendation on how what what I need to do to or what what you would suggest to to gain muscle, but also lose body fat. Maybe I'm approaching this wrong after listening to you guys now for two months. I probably am, so I'll shut up now. If well, you're sitting you, around 10, you, can, I can, would go gain. Can, yeah, can we just get? I want to get some clarity on like how amazing this is. What you've done here, you've lost well over a hundred pounds. You've gotten down to nine and a half percent body fat, and you're actually eating twenty eight hundred to thirty two hundred calories. About 60 pounds. That's oh, is it sixty? Yeah, no. three fifty four. No, to no. one ninety five. No, bro, do your math. Oh, one sixty, bro. Oh, wow. Yes, dude. He's you've lost. Is that right? Is this all right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, bro, yeah, you understand how crazy that, that is? Insane. Yeah. And he's at nine and a half percent, and he's eating twenty eight hundred to thirty two hundred calories. Now, granted, I know you're six foot five, and so we have room to bump our calories, but, bro. You're in a fucking really yeah. good play, and you yeah. did a really good job. So right now you're at 205. You said, uh, yeah, right around 205. Right now because he bumped yeah, his calories. 205. Yeah. So yeah, so um, if, and if you were sitting at like less than 10 percent going into that, yeah, bro, um, you're good. You're doing okay. I mean, th that 10 pound weight gain. Some of it, you're stronger. You said you're stronger. So yeah. some of it's muscle. Some of it's probably water. Water, mostly water. Yeah, in the muscles. 
Do they feel fuller? Do they feel tighter? Do you get better pumps when you're working out? That's probably yeah, that's, a lot better pumps. That's yeah. that's probably yeah. what's going on. Um, now I see here that you work out uh, between 14 to 16 hours a week. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, and that's a, that's a combination of lifting, you know, even walking the dog, stuff like that. But oh, uh, activity. I, I'm recovering from it. Like prior to this summer, I, I was running 150 to 200 miles a month. Um, I got this muscle injury in my shin around May and I, I, I dialed that back and I started swimming. So swimming is most of the, what I do now. I will run once or twice a week. Um, I like to do a, like a sprint session where I run for three minutes, easy sprint for 20 seconds for 10 minutes after I lift. Um, like I said, these, these are after I'm doing the functional days on an anabolic because I've been on that now for the past month. Um, so that's okay. the only running I do now. I'm, I'm actually in Miami this week and I just, I've run a, a mile a morning just, you know, on the beach cause it's nice. Right. And I do enjoy running, but it was hurting my body. I was always stiff or whatever, but now I feel great. I just feel, I feel bloated and full and you know, I don't know. I, it may just be, I need to go do this for a few months cause I never really lifted. I only did push ups and then like some light dumbbells. This is in your oh, head, yeah, bro. Is, yeah. This is in your head. It's all just in your head. Getting used to it. I would go with the slow reverse diet. So kind of slowly bump your calories over time. And focus on getting stronger through MAPS Ooh. Anabolic. And you're going to build muscle. You you might get leaner. Uh, you'll probably stay the same. But you might get leaner, not because you lost body fat, but because you gained lean body mass. Uh, so your current fat mass will be measured as a lower percentage of your, all body, okay. of your overall body weight. But I would do like a nice, clean bulk, meaning, you know, if you're eating between 28 to, it says here between 2,800 to 32 calories a day, you know, I would keep it around 3,000 to 3,500, something like that just so it's a little higher than normal. Um, and then just get stronger. That's the direction I would go. I wouldn't go, uh, you know, I wouldn't try and get leaner than the nine and a half, unless you really want to. But when you get down below 9%, especially came from where you, coming from where you came from, yeah. you start to get to the- It's not sustainable. Yeah, it's the unhealthy range and it starts to affect hormones negatively and all that stuff for most people. Well, let me tell you too what, if you're my client or say my friend, uh, the goal I would want you to have, it's your body, it's your choice, you could do whatever you want. But what I want would want you to do is I'd want you to get to a place where all the swimming and running and all the stuff that you're doing, that you don't need to, to maintain your calorie intake and your, and your physique where you're at. Like I, I want it truly to be like, and I don't know where your headspace is when you do those things, but a lot of times when I have a client that is that heavy, lost a lot of weight, and they did a lot of it through that much activity, yeah. their relationship to that exercise, they've told themselves they love doing it, but a lot of it is like, I love doing it because it keeps my weight down, not because I really enjoy to swim or run per se. And so I would want you to be in that headspace. I want you to be in a place where it's like, we've built enough muscle on your body, Bobby, where you could eat 3,200 calories a day and not gain weight like, and not do any running or any swimming. And so therefore you can go and do that as like a true leisurely thing and you could cut it out of your life and it still be okay and you still maintain it and all yeah. the weight doesn't come flying back on. So I would want us to be there. And the one way to make sure we get there is to keep reverse dieting, building a lot of muscle, slowly pulling back on the amount of swimming, running, and all the things we're doing. Not because I'm going to get rid of it forever, but because I want to show you you can do that. I want to show you that you're going to have a time in your life, Bobby, when you're not going to be able to do all that running, all that swimming, stuff like that. And I want you to be feel like you're in control of your weight, not that it's going to like come piling back on because all of a sudden you stopped doing all that activity. And I can prove that to you by building your metabolism up through building muscle, through strength training. That's where I would want you to be. And yeah. then if you look back at me and say, oh my God, Adam, this is crazy. I'm eating 3,800 or 4,000 calories a day and I'm loving this. And you're, and I'm like, hey, you know, if you want to run and swim, go for it, dude. But yeah. do it because you love it, not because you're trying to keep your weight with it. I think you're, you're, it's very realistic based off of what we know now. It's very realistic for you to get to a 37 to 4,000 calorie maintenance with good lean body oh. mass and good lean body fat percentage. And not even really running. You're no, six foot five. It's very, very realistic. If you're already there now after losing that much weight, uh, because typically what happens with that much weight loss is there's a you see a much you see a slower, much slower metabolism. Yeah. So if you're already at twenty eight to thirty two maintaining, um, it's very realistic over the next six months, I'd say, of of just focusing on strength, slow reverse diet, building muscle, hitting protein to get up to 3,700, maybe to 4,000 calories and stay pretty damn lean. 
And that's a really cool place to be because then if you want to get down to 5%, you go to your runs and you go, swims. You, or, or you, no, you just go down, back down to 3,200. Now yeah, you get shredded. Or that, yeah. yeah. But you have all that flexibility. I mean, I, I man, you're a, in a great place, Bobby. I mean, you really are. You, you've done a good job this thus far getting here, and not a lot of people could get away. Get with, strong. Yeah. If you if you really focus on getting strong, you're going to be blown away by how your body looks. I want to. You have maps anabolic. I'd like to put you in our forum. I'd like to hear your journey as you're going through, and just uh, and I'd like to be that support for you when you when you're when you get in your own way because that's yeah. going to happen i already know that this is this is what the hardest part you're going to have well you're already you're already saying you feel funny because you gained 10 pounds yeah uh and, you know and which is probably water muscle fullness but to somebody who has lost a lot of weight who was heavy it's like scary no yeah yeah it's a mental thing and, and even my, my wife's in, if you heard people in the background she's been telling me the same things now that i hear from you all like um and, and you know i never i never enjoyed the weightlifting. I never really liked it. I mean, I was in the army when I was younger and that sort of thing. And I did it. Um, but now I'm fine. And I really like, and I like the time it gives me back because, yes. uh, I run my own company. I'm sure I'm in a doctoral program. So I really like that. Now I don't have to say, Oh, I've got to go run for an hour and then yes. run again. Um, so I, I've been able to separate the running, I, I, but I do enjoy, like, I really do enjoy cardio. That's fine. Um, so scaled it way back. Cause I mean, these lifts and then the, the trigger sessions, um, my my thing is bringing the trigger sessions lower, right? I I want to I want to do like two hundred push ups no. on the days yeah. of the lift, and, and doing twenty or thirty is like uh but uh, I'm getting there. Think of the yeah. trigger sessions as facilitating recovery and adaptation, little, not as yeah, little, sending the muscle building signal itself. It's so funny think of it that way. You know, honestly, you're actually somebody who I might even let skip those. I don't normally yeah. tell people that, but because you you sounds like to me you have a tendency to want to do more. Uh, and mobility I, would be a better practice. and you don't yeah you don't need to be doing more activity and and by the way when i say scale back on that i wouldn't rip the band-aid off and go like no more swimming no more none of that stuff you know i'd say hey you know every week you're doing about this much let's just pull back a little bit on that and let's put more emphasis on the strength training bobby what happens what would happen if you went for like you're already doing this with running you said you're in miami you're running about a mile on the beach you're probably not even thinking about it like a workout you're probably like oh this is gorgeous i'm gonna go enjoy this Yes. What, what would your cardio look like if that's how you did it? If it had nothing to do with working out, had nothing to do with trying to sweat and burn calories, if you're just like, I'm going to go enjoy this, like, would it look different than it is now? Uh, probably not. I mean, I, I think three months ago, yeah, I would have said okay. it, it. I would go out and I'd want to do an hour, you know, uh, you know, run, run, thinking about running ultra marathons, that sort of thing. But now, no, I mean, a nice long walk with the dog, the wife, oh, that's an good. easy swim. And it's all zone two. Like I said, I only am doing this because I really got into lo the longevity piece, right? Okay. And I realized that running was was probably building up more visceral fat, that sort of thing. Um, I, I just want to be healthy when I'm when I'm 80 years old. I want to be able to do whatever I want to do. Oh, you know? you're on the That's, right track. You're, you're doing Walks good, bro. Are perfect. You're yeah, fine then. You're doing good, bro. Yeah, do the reverse diet, build yeah. some muscle, mainly because from a longevity standpoint, because you might think, well, what does it have to do with longevity? It gives you more flexibility because if you plan on living in a modern society, uh, you're going to have access to a lot of food, events, vacations. And if your body is main maintaining at 4,000 calories, you go on vacation with your wife for a couple weeks. I mean, you got a lot. You're, you know, you, if you look at the studies on the negative effects of, of food, you know, 95% of those negative effects are negated when the cat, when the calories are lower than the, what the person burns. You can, you, you can look at studies on high sugar diets, uh, terrible diets, but if the person's body is burning it off, it's like almost all of the negative effects are negated. So really what it does is just gives you the flexibility to enjoy your life and to not always have to worry about, you know, what you're eating and putting in your mouth. So that's why we tend to recommend that to most people because, Again, we live in so so much plenty, so much variety that I would rather have someone have a faster metabolism than one that's a little slower. You're you're on the right track though, bro. You're doing really good. I, yeah. I want Doug to put you in the forum and just keep us posted, dude. Just totally. just tag us every month or two and let us know how things are going. If you have any challenges or yep. what's what's up, and we'll we'll give you little bits of, of tips and stuff like that along your way. But I think you're in a really yeah. good place, a good mindset. And I think you're on the right path, and I think you're gonna be really impressed with what you're going to be able to do because I think you're primed to build some yeah. muscle. What are you studying right now, by the way, Bobby? Uh, strategic leadership. Okay. Ooh. Business school, yeah. Ooh. yeah. So, Ooh, all right, good just, for you, man. I, I just wanted to do something hard, and I figured, like, running, I got to the point where it's, I don't know, it's a whole mental 
it's the wrong mental mindset, but again, now I'm in school and I'm enjoying it. So, Hey, that's why. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Good, fine. Good but, deal, but I love, I love the way you got, you guys have really helped transform because I was going down a bad place. Um, just beating my body thinking let more is more. And I like, I like it when you say find the least you can do, I got to get to that place. And I'm, I'm, you know, I, I listen to everything you guys put out, read everything you put out. So thank you so much. for Appreciate what you're, it. You're, you're on the right Thanks track, dude. You're going to do, man. You're gonna do, awesome. You're going to do good, bro. Just Thanks, to, Bobby. Stop listening to David Goggins. You'll be fine. So we'll be all right. <laughs> How did you know? How did you know? That was, uh, that bro. Was my spirit. Uh, bro, trust yeah. me. He's I know I know one when I see. I am one. So yeah. I know one when I see one, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. All right, Bobby. We'll, we'll, we'll keep you posted. All right. Sounds good, man. Boy, that, that message. So annoying. Oh, the, that, that Goggins. The, yeah, I, I appreciate, I respect him. I get it, but that message uh, causes way more damage than it does. Good. You know, I, there's some people that benefit from it. They you know, get off their ass and do something. Yeah, it's. I, I have for sure. I, I'm I'm partial to. It. Yeah. I actually I like him. Right. So like I bet so if we, I, I bet if we met we'd be friends. I really like him, and so and I definitely think. There's a big horde of people that are fucking lazy. They need to and, hear that shit. And they need to do some hard shit in their life because they're a bunch of pussies. Yeah. We so, need people like that out there to show the yeah. human potential, but like but, <laughs> applying what he's doing is completely well, the, like, So here's the irony. The irony gap. of it is that the people who actually take it and do it are the ones, are, that, are the ones that don't need I know. it. Exactly. Are the guys like him. That's the, guy, that's the problem. The guy like him, like, like Bobby, who was very disciplined, as Listen. you can see, and very consistent and is a hard motherfucker. And he takes it to that level. And it's like, that's the guy who doesn't need that. That's the right. guy who needs, hey, your goal is to do as little as possible to elicit the most that's amount of right. change. That's right. Like that is that what that guy needs yeah, to hear. If, we, so if like, we started a class here that was like a boot camp, kick the crap out of yourself, for sure it would attract people who are be who enjoy beating the shit out of themselves. Yes. Yeah. It would not attract the person who's like, oh, you know what? I do need to get off the couch. They'd be like, I don't want to do that. I want to do something. If you're getting else, so. me ready for war, I'm, you know I'm gogging. Very different. Yeah. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. Our next caller is Kate from Australia. Hi, Kate. How can we help you? Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me on today. Um, I just have a question. I'm guessing you guys have already read it, but pull ups. I well, actually should say chin ups. Chin ups. I've been struggling with um, since I started resistance training. I can only get like a max rep of four and We've been at four pretty much this whole year, and it's just starting to piss me off. But I can't do it anymore, and it's not going anywhere. Any tips? Yeah, yeah. I got it. I've got a couple. Yeah. Uh, one, yeah. the fact that you're up to three to four reps is yeah, pretty good. That's good. Is yeah. is actually really good, and it also opens the opportunity to do heavy singles. Meaning that you yeah. strap a twenty pound or twenty five pound weight to your like waist one. and do one, and then rest, and then do one again. Also, the yeah. opportunity to do where you get a bench, put thirty to forty pounds on your waist, start in the pull up yeah. position, and resist the so way negative. down with a lot of weight. So a weight that you can't even do one with, you put on your waist. Yeah. You get on a bench yeah. to where you're already in the chin up position. And then you then yeah. and then then step off the bench and then resist the weight or down. Or even an isometric, you know. Um, yep. Yeah, the, the 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 tips that Adam is giving you are very valuable, uh, but they do need to be programmed properly because what a lot of people mess up with when they're trying to get better, especially with pull ups for some reason or chin ups, is they just go hard every time they work out. Yeah, and. And that's going to make it very difficult for you to progress. So here's, listen, this, I'm gonna, what I'm going to tell you, uh, it, for me was uh, eight out of 10 times would success, would successfully get someone to, to double the reps of their chin up. Literally 80% of the time this would work. And what I would tell my clients was get a chin up bar, mm -hmm. put it in your house yep. and throughout the day, you can do three to four, right? Three to four reps. You said. Yeah. Are you going to tell me to do it when I walk off? Just, I doing that. just do, no, no, no. Just do one. One, yeah. Just do one. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Time you walk past yeah. you, you walk by it, do one. Come back down. You whatever. know she put yeah. in her note. She's doing that, right? Yeah. So, so now are you yeah. now are you doing that plus a back workout, or are you doing that and not doing a back workout? So I'm doing that, and then I'm doing. So I've just finished aesthetic, um, but I've just been adding in chin ups and dropping something else out of like one of the aesthetic days, a couple of the aesthetic days. So I'm making sure that I'm doing at least twice a week and then doing also just one. Yeah. Up. So now that's, that's, that that's a little too much, right? So if, so okay. do this over a four week period, take all the back workout yeah. out of your, out of your workout, maybe one exercise or none and just practice your pull-ups okay. throughout the day. That's it. 
and then, okay. and then and then you should okay. see a strength in, improvement. I don't think more intensity is, especially now that I know you did maps aesthetic, which is really high volume. Oh yeah. Um, I don't think more intensity is the key. Um, like literally, I wouldn't do any back workout in your training, and just throughout the day, maybe five or six times throughout the day, you just do one. You just do one pull up, and then you and then you walk around, do whatever, and a couple hours later, do another pull up. And just do do that maybe five times, uh, you know, maybe f out of the uh, five out of the seven days, and you'll probably e even if you feel like, by the way, even if you feel like that one pull up gets way easier, which is what you're going to start to feel like, even within the same day, what you may find is you do it in the morning, do it in the afternoon, do it, and you're like, oh, I feel like I can do two. Just do one. By the end of the four weeks, give yourself a week of rest. Go back to your pull ups and then see what your max is, and you'll probably be able to get close to seven probably close to seven reps. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Now, now I want, you. I want you to follow up with us because I want to hear about how you, this works for you. Do you think maybe we should have her on a different program than maps aesthetic? Aesthetic is a lot of volume. I know. That's why I said she how, put her on a different program. Are you finishing yes. aesthetic? Yes. Yeah, so I've just finished it. I'm just doing a daily week now and then I was going to go back to anabolic. Oh, perfect. There you go. You're good. Yep. You're good. You can still deadlift an anabolic, but don't do any of the other back exercises while you're doing this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that. Thank you. Yeah. You got it. Oh, uh, by the way, Doug, can you put her on the forum if she's not in there? Yeah. Because I want you to follow up with us. I want to hear what happens in four weeks. Yeah, I will. I will. Thank you very much. You got it. Thank you. I'm glad you said the fur to do that because I don't agree with you on this one. What do you think? I think my advice is better. With the current volume she's doing? It doesn't even matter. I don't. I think she got to her three to four reps by just f through her frequency of doing. She wrote in her notes that she's doing what you, we already suggested. Yeah, but what she's you said. also, yeah, you know, care. what is aesthetic? How many sets are you doing for back Monday, Wednesday, Friday? I, I still think that she's going to get more benefit from heavy loading singles and resisting negatives even heavier. Well, I, I think they both work. But because of the amount of volume that she's doing, um, adding a negative, a heavy negative, ooh, that might be an issue. I mean, maybe. I didn't get any signs from her her response that she's like hurting or overtraining or anything like that, though. So, I mean, we'll see. I'll, we'll see what she does. I would I would have stuck with what I said, and I think she'd notice a difference right away. Just well, we'll that. see. I don't think it's wrong. I don't think either one would have been necessarily wrong. But with that much volume plus practicing pull-ups, I mean, I would That's always, I would always go the direction you went first, but because she put in her that she's listened to our advice about doing chin ups frequently throughout. You the You know day. what I need to say when I tell people to do this is to cut back on their volume and intensity of the workouts. If you're doing, if you're already pushing the volume and intensity, and then you decide you're going to practice a bunch of, uh, you know, pull ups throughout the week, it, it could be enough to put you over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a good chance that's how that's happening. Our next caller is Sam from Virginia. What's up, Sam? How can we help you? Hey guys, how you doing? What's up? Good, good. Dude? Uh, I uh, thanks so much for taking time out of your day to speak to me. I hope you and your families are doing good. Um, I've been a listener for many years, so bear with me. It's a little surreal. Uh, <laughs> I uh, maybe I'll, let me just jump into my question, um, give a little structure, and then I can give a little backstory as to why I'm asking this particular question because it might be a little bit of an odd question or not your everyday question. So what I wanted to ask you guys is what you thought about whether there was a vocational space in the fitness and gym industry right now for a mental health professional like myself, uh, even if I had to go get certified as a personal trainer. Um, the reason I'm asking this question, just to give a little understanding and backstory and why I chose this question. Um, uh, like I said in my email, you know, um, from a pretty young age, I battle with my mental health, um, in particular post-traumatic stress disorder, um, and all that comes with that. And, um, you know, it's something I live with, something I deal with. And, uh, at 28 years old today, by the grace of God, I can say I'm, I'm doing well and I'm in active recovery from it. Um, but the point is, is that I, I've done therapy and it's benefited me. I've tried medications and they've benefited me. And uh, I've even, you know, studied psychology and counseling myself in college. And and yet, all with all that to say, there's nothing that has consistently helped me on a day-to-day -day basis to improve my mental health, like exercise and working out. Um, in particular, weightlifting, um, strength training, hiking and you know a little bit of jujitsu and boxing but primarily since i was 15 i've lifted weights 
And that's not to minimize the power of medications and therapy and psychotherapy. I believe in it so much. I'm a counseling intern right now with my own clients, (laughs) but man, the gym and lifting weights and exercise as a whole, it might sound dramatic to some people, but I truly believe God brought that to me to save my life. Um, And uh, to wrap up and I'll, I'll let you guys answer, but um just want to express my gratitude to you guys. Um, I know you hear it a lot, but as funny as it might sound, your podcast has been a companion to me on some pretty dark days. Um, But especially the way you guys have talked, especially recent, well, maybe not recently, but maybe you've done it for a while now, but uh, just the way you talk about building a healthy relationship with exercise and not overcorrecting from to where you're overworking yourself and you're just exercising to just not feel anything. And um, I think that was a blessing for me to hear that from you guys, because it was at a time when I was dangerous uh, getting close to doing that. So, I mean, from the bottom of my heart, really thank you guys for speaking about mental health um, because Lord knows I'm not alone. (laughs) Um, But anyway, I know that was a lot, but that's really the context why that question is so important to me is funny as a question as it might be, because I really want to use both to help people. I don't think you can do, I, I think they should be combined, honestly. So just wonder what you guys thought about that. Oh, huge yeah, need for absolutely. that. Absolutely. Huge need for that. I think the future of the fitness and health industry is either uh, partnerships. I used to, so towards the end of my career, I partnered with therapists and counselors to work with clients. And I had tremendous success uh, as a trainer. So I think the future is combining, you mentioned three modalities, right? Therapy, medication, and then physical activity. Uh, All three of them have value. Nothing compares to combining all three, especially when you're dealing with really tough uh, situations. Exercise is such a powerful vehicle for personal growth. Uh, Physiologically, it improves your health, so it improves your brain health and your physical health, which contributes to things like anxiety and depression and your resilience. But it's also just a growth journey. I mean, you gotta you struggle at exercises. You gotta learn things about yourself. There's a lot of self acceptance. There's purpose and meaning behind the discipline that it requires to get up and do something. Um, and, and there's, I mean, and then there's things that are unexplainable uh, about why it's so powerful. But the data now shows. It is incredibly effective for especially the the common forms of depression, anxiety that people uh, tend to suffer from. If you work with people who are trying to improve their fitness and health or lose weight, and so you have a background in therapy, and then you also have a background in in exercise knowledge, uh, workout programming, you know, nutritional guidance, I mean, you're going to be amazing. You'll be so effective with people. It's not even funny. The thing that I used to teach my trainers the most, uh, to help them become successful just in terms of getting results for the clients was the part that you've already learned because they knew the exercise part, they knew the diet part, but the behavioral, um, you know, aspect of what it takes and and what helps is what, where they needed to learn. And when they did, it was, it was like magic. So massive, massive, uh, need in the space for, for someone like yourself. It's, it's so much so Sam, most of my career, I hired, trained, and developed trainers. That's what I did for most of my career. I would rather have, I would rather hire you to work with me with maybe no training other people background or any national certifications than the guy who has a four year degree and three national certifications. That's how powerful where you're coming from is for the space. Uh, one, you're you're incredibly passionate about it because of what it's done to you and in your life. I think that most of personal training is mindset and the psych, the psychology, behavioral science. And so if you already have a passion and interest there, you're going to help more people out through that vehicle of communication than you ever will by no understanding macros to the deepest level or biomechanics and program design. Those things are are nice and helpful. I can teach you that as a boss. I can, I can teach you how to put exercise selection together and how to do balance out someone's macros. But the the schooling and, and experience that you have uh, with what you've gone through and what you are going through, uh, oh my God, that makes it a, an even better trainer. So yeah, man, I think that there's a, a massive need for it. And I think there's huge opportunity for someone who is passionate about uh, weight training and helping people out and has your background. 
Yeah, it's interesting because you see how uh, they're already realizing the importance for movement uh, in, with therapy in combination, uh, and you're seeing some little bits of. I mean, this is a, this is a big ship to steer, and I think that you know people like you coming into the fitness space and actually applying that would probably uh, take off uh, and establish that even. I would say earlier than the, than the other approach. So I think that, uh, you know, this could be the spark, uh, in terms of a different segment of how we, we sort of take this on and, and bring it in through the fitness industry, as opposed to the therapy industry, maybe it, but both are going to be affected by this. That's, that's a given. Yeah. The two, the two directions I could see would be, um, continuing doing what you're doing, get some certifications and training in exercise, uh, technique, form, you know, work with some good coaches, work with diet. So you can kind of do it all. That takes a little while. Or um, just continue to dive deep on the therapy side. And then when you want to start a business, um, I would partner with some really good trainers. And then you would do the counseling side and you would work hand in hand with the trainers who would do the exercise and mm -hmm. nutrition side. So those are the two, the two avenues that I could see that, that I would say I, I partnered because I just yeah. didn't have the background or the education in it. And I, I, we were, I'm telling you, it was so effective. It was insane. Like, like I knew when people worked with me and they worked mm -hmm. with a therapist and then I would throw in body work in that if I could, um, because that there's also some profound benefits to having someone who really understands yeah. body work. It takes years off people that don't see results. Oh my God. It was like, it's like, it was like, I knew it was like 90% of them would have a tremendous success, um, in all aspects. It was, it was incredible stay, weight loss and, you know, mindset and all that stuff. So. Stay, stay close to us, Sam. We got something to coming down the pipe in the next quarter or so. So yeah. something that will be perfect for you. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I, I really appreciate it. And like I said, I, I, I'm sure you guys are aware, um, but I just wanted to reinforce how powerful it is for you guys in your unique space to speak about mental health. Um, because I know growing up, I kind of saw working out and going to the gym and lifting weights yeah. and, you know, all that as one world. And I saw dealing with my mental health as a totally separate world. And as I've gotten old, you know, and just the last thing I'll say on here, um, it, a real world example of what you guys talk about all the time, um, is, you know, I, I got the privilege of working as a, um, associate counselor at a, a drug rehab center for like four years. So I worked with people in addiction and we had this little gym, like in the, in the basement with like cobwebs on it and stuff. Um, but it had some good stuff and like, as a as a young counselor, I'm still a young counselor, but even back then I felt like I didn't know a whole lot of psychotherapy and stuff. And so what I would just do, people were having a bad day, I say, like, hey, like, I'll go open the gym for you. Like, let's go work out. And yeah. so we would go down there and I would see, man, like I I know this sounds crazy, but people I even had like one young guy who was dealing with meth, you know, he was withdrawing from meth, he was craving meth. And just getting him to go to the gym. And obviously I didn't push him hard. It's like, don't, don't do too much. Your body's very compromised right now, but just doing just a little bit of light exercise just to see the difference. And that's kind of when it started to click. Cause I, it was already working for me. And then it was like, Oh my word. Like just the, the difference that those folks did who were in the 30 day inpatient treatment center when they were consistently going down, even if it's just walking on the treadmill every day versus the people that didn't. And instead we're just doing the, you know, the medications and the therapy. It was amazing, the difference. And so that's another thing. I, I know this is, um, I know this, there's a, you know, hopefully a good amount of people will hear this. And so if, I just want people to know if you're out there, you're struggling and you feel like you need to ditch the fitness journey to, to like, go figure out your mental health, obviously like, don't, <laughs> please don't, you know, just, um, maybe adjust it. Like you guys always talk about the proper amount. Don't overwork yourself. Don't use it as a form of, to just beat yourself into not being able to feel anything, but please don't. Cause it, it I've, I've personally seen it save lives. Um, so again, thank you guys so much for you what you it. do. You got it, Sam. Nothing, thank, you, nothing you said sounds crazy to us. We, thank, we've no. been doing this for a long time, yeah, so right. it's like we know you're on the right track, brother. Perfect sense, Keep it up. Sure. Can't wait to hear your journey. Thanks for calling in, man. 
All right, guys, take care. You got it. You know, I I have to comment on the on this because uh, the strength of the system that we have here in the western in Western societies is also its weakness, right? So, we do a really good job of segmenting things and going deep. Yeah. The problem with and that's good because you really understand one system very well when you do that. The problem with that is we've created this illusion that health is segmented. Yeah. That systems there's are different. Mental health. No. There's physical health. There's spiritual health. There's it's health, right? It's yeah. all health. Improve your health and your health improves. It is not separate. It's no. it's such a- You're cr- one organism. It's a terrible illusion and exactly what he said. It's like somebody who wants to improve their mental health, like they don't, you know, what, what's the most that they understand about exercise? Oh, it releases endorphins, good feel good chemicals. No, 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 it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. And then on the flip side, somebody wants to lose weight. Oh, I just got to follow this plan. Not thinking like I got to deal with like some some- trauma or some other issues with my relationship with food and my body. Like it's all one and uh, people need to understand that. And if you understand that you, your, your, your chance of success are, are so much higher. Man, I would love to see a study done off of what, you know what he just said that would be really cool to see is take a rehab center oh, like that where they're in for 30 days and take half the group and they have some they, weight train and, and yeah the one half a group stays on a daily weight training regimen every you, for 30 days yeah. and then take the other group that doesn't at all and mm-hmm. compare the two you want to know yeah. i mean i have a pretty good idea what would happen but dude, why have we not had a, a good be, be, dude you, I'm a, you, know this is how bad. you know why because you know why because there's more <laughs> money in them coming back come on what are you going to sell with that yeah exactly you know, you're sell it. you know what makes me sad when this first happened i remember uh, i was so devastated i thought what a stupid thing that they've done they took gyms out of prisons Mm-hmm. Here in California. Yep. Yep. Do you know how terrible that is? The one outlet. Do you know that how beneficial that was to oh. so many inmates and their mental health? And it gave them some purpose yeah. and they could go Confidence, better themselves. Purpose, like, yeah, they're they're improving themselves. They're gr- they're growing uh, in terms of like being a better human being. Like all of that is there once you start like actively working on yourself and, and fitness is, is a huge part of that. It's crazy. It's like, they're, oh, we're, we don't want inmates to get too big and strong. Well, I guess we don't want them to get smart too. Take out the libraries while <laughs> yeah, you're at it. Let's yeah. just keep them. The dumbest possible thing. And Doesn't it has, any sense. And, and I, I, I know there's data to show this. It's had profoundly negative effects. I remember when Arnold uh, and bodybuilders in the seventies used to visit prisons to teach them how to strength train and exercise, yep. put the gyms back in the prisons and go ahead and use it as a way you to keep really want to reform. Yeah, that's what you're going to do. 100%. Well, that's make the, a better that's person. The truth. Do you really want the reform? Is that what we're is that the true desire? Or they make outcome? money the longer they stay. That's right. And the same thing goes with these rehab centers. Exactly. It's like you've ever, I wish I remember that. What was that documentary? Remember that documentary, Doug? I can't remember the name of it, but that was such an enlightening documentary oh, on yeah, the, 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 the rehab oh centers and the and the oh, way the, the insurance pill mills works for those and oh. like what a hustle it is to just keep them signing up for those. Like the success rate is like it's under 15%. What is it? Mm. Body brokers. Oh, yeah. Watch that documentary. That's a worth a watch. The business of keeping sick. It's crazy. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness, muscle building and fat loss guides. They're free. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 